how do we behave when we are forced to deal with a massive, unexpected event in our personal lives or in our societies? Well, this is one of the big existential questions addressed in the absurd display Rhinoceros by the French-Romanian uh, playwright Eugene Ionesco. He wrote the play in 1959, but still remains incredibly relevant today. Well, the play has been adapted into the Welsh language for the first time by Theatre Ghent, and I went to Cardiff to see this amazing play, which I truly loved. This production is mad. It's truly, truly great. I also had a yeah. chat yeah. with the artistic director of Theatre Ghent, Thank you so much for having Stephen me. Tell Donnelly, us a little bit about who also directed this production of the play. The show is now on tour in, in Wales, Wales, so please take a look at their website to see which which dates and where they're going next. For now, take a look at my interview. Hello everyone, welcome back to People of Theatre. I'm in Cardiff today with Stefan Donnelly, who is the artistic director and joint CEO of Theatre Again uh, here in Wales. Yeah, yeah, and it's lovely to have you with us. Yeah. Thank you so much for having me. Tell us a little bit about your company. Our company is the Welsh Language National Theatre of Wales and we um, tour work all across the country in loads of different venues and obviously like, we do the big like classical plays, a bit like what you're seeing tonight, although it's a European classic, a bit off the wall. Mm -hmm. Then we also support loads of new writing um, and also children's shows. So the next show, we're about to start rehearsals on, on Monday, is a children's show called Suin. And it's all in Welsh, which all is All in Welsh, although actually Suin is in British Sign Language and Welsh, so right. that's a, a, a bilingual show. Tell us why we are in Cardiff at Sherman Theatre tonight in Cardiff, presenting your show. Yes, uh, it's the opening night for Rhinoceros, Rhinoceros uh, which is a play by Eugene Ionesco, written in 1959. And it's in the first adaptation in Welsh by Manon Stefan Ross, who's mm -hmm. an amazing writer. Tell us a little bit about the play. The play is an absurdist kind of comedy in the beginning um, about uh, a whole um, village that turn or transform into rhinoceroses right um <laughs> yeah i mean you could see All it right. as just that but obviously uh, when unesco was writing it he was writing it as an allegory and the allegory was uh, mm. around fascism and extremism and um, so i think that feels quite relevant to where we're at now as a as a nation and what, mm. what policies are being considered or what the kind of mood is in, around society around extremism um, and I guess, yeah, the way we've tried to frame it is that the play begins almost like a Disney movie and ends like a post-apocalyptic movie. The play is about choice, um, the individual's choice. And I think especially with our uh, depiction of the play, the, the right to democracy, um, the individual's choice and the consequences that people's choice has. Hello, people of theatre. My name is Rodri Mailer. Um, I'm currently playing Berenger in a Welsh language production of Rhinoceros. And why did you opt for this play? As you said, it's a play was written in 1959, yeah. I think. It's yeah. a European play, it was written actually in French. Yeah, by a um, Romanian writer, UNESCO. Yeah. Right, so why did you opt for this play? Uh, um, I was looking for a classic, but I wanted to do something that wasn't just Shakespeare or from the Welsh language canon necessarily. Mm. I often feel like Wales has more connection with Europe, being that you know we're a nation with a minoritized language, and I feel like it's a play that discusses extremism, but not in a sort of didactic way, not mm. in a way that tells you what to think. I feel like UNESCO is a writer for our times, like we had the chairs on at the Almeida recently and Exit the King with another Welsh amazing right. actor, Chris yeah. Evans at the National. So I feel like all of those plays are kind of asking massive questions about today, about our society, and sort of what do we do when major events happen, be that mm. the Brexit vote, uh, the COVID pandemic, right. or a herd of rhinos appearing in your village. I think the, the play is very relevant today because of the constant threats of the extremists and the right wing growing um, and the effect that has on the choices that people make. Um, it could happen anywhere at any time. Um, perhaps today, maybe not as extreme as it was when the play was initially written, but we don't know. It, it could go that way easily. And as you say, it's also like an absurd display. So it's very at the moment for what the UK theatre scene looks mm. like. It's not very usual to That's have true. absurd -like plays yeah. on stage. I wonder what did you find so fascinating appealing ah, for audiences today to have this kind of approach to theatre? Yeah, I reckon it's about the fact that because it's not a kitchen sink drama, it does kind of liberate you from literalism. 
and mm. it therefore makes your imagination work harder and invest more because like i say it's about humans transforming to rhinos so obviously visually it's a stunning piece but it mm. also means that you as an audience have to go on that journey with us um, so I feel like, yeah, it kind of unlocks imagination and therefore makes it a slightly more kind of rooted and um, questioning experience mm. for uh, an audience. I've really enjoyed um, being part of an absurdist piece um, because of the possibilities that it lends to a performer. Um, you're not confined by strict rules necessarily. You know, gives you those opportunities to go to the extremes and to be as little as you like or as large as you like. So it's, it's really good fun. How about the Dijon that you're going to use in the um, play? Because well, I guess for these plays, it's actually quite important. Yeah, yeah and actually we hear the rhinos before mm. we see them. So actually there's an amazing soundscape running back to back, basically through the whole hour and a half. Um, and then we obviously see them and we've got like an evolution where clay is used quite a lot as the mm. beginning. And then that evolves into um, prosthetics. And then in the end, it evolves into uh, a full on Heard, actually not heard, a crash of rhinos at the end. I've done Intense, my research. I can't write. Oh my <laughs> God, you really did. <laughs> the play actually really deals with some very important issues such as yeah. responsibility as a collective and also on a, on a personal basis, yeah. love for humanity, what we can do for, you know, the, 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 the society at large. How did you approach all of this with the current times actually very uh, tragic at the moment. Mm. How did you approach all of this as a director for the play? It was really important that, yeah, like you say, though, that those feelings carried a lot of heart and connections. So although it's an absurdist play, we did a huge amount of character work mm. about looking at what the different characters are wanting or needing from the different situations, because it's kind of extreme, ridiculous situations. But we needed to root that in reality, in feeling, right. um, in humanity, really. And then we've got this main character, Berenger, who's a kind of anti-hero. He starts to play and, and, and he hates his life. He can't really do a lot of living. He doesn't really enjoy it in his work life and his personal life. I'm playing Berenger, who at the beginning of the play is a bit of a, at a, bit of a loss. Um, he's an alcoholic. He's had enough of life, enough of his job, enough of the village. He's had um, a skinful of everything. Um, and despite the villagers changing um, during the play, Berenger himself has a kind of metamorph uh, metamorphosis because he goes from a hopeless character and suddenly has a fight on his hands. And by the end of the play, he has become a much stronger person with something to fight for. And he goes on this amazing journey where he is sort of the last man standing. Mm. And I think that was UNESCO writing about himself, you know, because he was seeing all his friends around in turn. And so what does this character do? And in a way, we are that everyman character as the audience as well. Right. I think the amazing thing about absurdism is, like you were talking earlier about more kitchen sink or naturalism being the vibe. I think it is kitchen sink, but a bit off kilter because absurdism originally means um, out of harmony. Like that's the etymology. Mm -hmm. And I feel like that sense of being out of harmony or off kilter is a really accurate description of the way our world feels right now. Yeah. Yes. yes, sadly. So this play tries to wrestle with that. And what, what can we do? Like, how can we change that? Yeah. Um, the most, the hardest and the easiest thing you found working um, in this, on this play? The easiest thing was the incredible cast. So there's eight on the stage and we've got an amazing creative team. And we all just, basically it's a show where everyone's fingerprints is on the show. It was proper collaborative. We played loads Sweet. of amazing games. And so I think you'll get that sense, that real like confidence from the cast. And then maybe the hardest thing was how we achieve that, that journey from it being like a lovely normal day in a small Welsh village somewhere in North Wales to it being totally run amok mm. with a herd of animals. And there is a moment, there's this really lovely sweet spot in the middle of the play where you're sort of, your feet are in both camps. It's a comedy, but it's also terrifying. And then it finally tilts into like pure terror. Oh my God. <laughs> so enjoy. Right, oh my God. Um, it's all in Welsh, we said. It is, yeah. Uh, and there is actually, um, there's a, an access language art. Yeah, so all our, our work predominantly is through the Welsh language and I'm really proud that our company was born out of protest is really important in terms of um, keeping the Welsh language thriving and making it accessible mm. so for people who uh, are new speakers or learners of Welsh language um, or those who are just Welsh curious 
uh, we've got a language access app uh, called Siprud, which means whisper, and you can basically scan the QR code, download the app, uh, you can hear scene synopses uh, through your headphones, and also on your phone screen you can see the scene synopses as written text as well. That's beautiful. That's quite innovative. Yeah, I it's, love re that. it's really innovative. I yeah. think we're one of the few companies doing that, mm -hmm. and now where that app is now being rolled out uh, by us across uh, the European Union to uh, minoritized language companies. So I'm really proud. Please, of that. please, yeah. more of this. It's great, isn't it? It just opens up access. Absolutely, to it. it's so cool. Plus, right. it's a really visual show, so like you don't need to know all the details of the words. You know, sometimes you can be overwhelmed with hearing every single line. Mm. So this just gives those synopses, so you can also enjoy the show. Amazing, Stefan. Thank you so much thank for you. this. Thanks so much. Thank you so much. Thank you.